I had the chance to talk to someone, just someone I didn't know, just to interview them to see how they felt about things, what life they walked from. They let me know they also grew up down south, was Native American. She was a female. Um, said she was raised around blacks. One of the questions I asked her, and uh, uh, she was talking about to hang out with them, but she didn't obey that. She said, one of the questions I asked her, what was it like being in the South and racism? She said, being a female in the South at the time, I was, I was discriminated against. How about uh, just being a Native American? And she says, since moved to Washington, I asked how she liked it up here. She says she has experienced no, no racism towards her. At this time, I would like to talk about my speech I wrote, about these speeches and how it touched my life and my life experience. And it's entitled Living the Dream. <clears throat> Living the Dream as a child growing up in the South. Born November 27, 1968 in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of things going on at the time. Civil rights in the South. Not understanding at the time as a child growing up there, going going up through the ages of one of ten, from from one to ten, had to be raised in a racial environment of differences between whites and blacks. At school, it was a day in and day out of learning and playing on the playground with my peers of blacks and whites, children with no differences. But as I, but as I learned the grown-ups' ideas and influences educated me that we were not allowed to interact. These times were one of the times in my life that I felt were the ugliest that any American could live through. Going to the store, the post office, the bank, or just being out in public. Was, was one of the meanest and ugliest times that people addressed each other in the most negative way between blacks and whites. In those times, you could not even look at each other long enough before the adults of either race would say something to rock it towards, towards one another. Fortunately, at the age of 10, I moved to the Bay Area, California, where I finally felt like I started living the dream. Finally being able to to be in the environment of no racial barriers, no racial slurs, no, no racial behavior or racial conduct. I learned being an African American child wasn't all that bad. Being out in public among adults was, uh, being out in public among adults wasn't as ugly and as great as it was in the South. Finally, as an adolescent going to junior high school, in high school, I joined. I enjoyed a normal life just like any other American child in this nation, participating in sports, music, social groups, and even being able to go over to my white friend's house wasn't a problem anymore. To spend the night, to visit, to eat with them, and to play with them in their backyards. To me, I was living the dream. As my life went on, life went on I graduated high school and joined the military and travel the world. It was a great eye-opener as to how beautiful the world could be, being a foreigner in other countries, being treated with, uh, with hospitality and respect, not only as a visitor, but as a human being. This showed me that the true meaning of humanity. The reason this influenced my life so much was that even though I did not speak their language or their mind, we still knew how to treat one another. We, we, we all knew one thing, the golden rule, do unto others as they, as you would have them do unto you. And given the opportunity of being in the military, the military, I was able to travel the world twice, even during a time of the Gulf War in 1991. I found that, I found that to be a blessing. Finally, on April 14, 1992, my career in the military ended. I decided to reside in Washington State. The life experience of others who came before me and endured the cruel treatment of others has truly allowed me to embrace humanity to the fullest. Living the dream, I have decided to never treat or respect another human being in a matter I had to endure 
being raised as a child in the South. I have decided to embrace Jeff King, JFK's message in his civil rights speech. I have decided to embrace and inspire Martin Luther King's urgency of now speech. Most of all, what I never thought I would see in my lifetime as an African American male, our hope, compassion, and the golden rule finally being put to use. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Though all we have been through as a nation, all the wars we have fought, and all the bloodshed due to civil rights through post 9-11, I have seen the compassion and love of this nation. It makes me proud to be an African American male with one last historical moment that I thought I would never see. An African American male and his wife as the president and first lady of the United States of America. Thank God, finally. At last, I'm living the dream.